Oh, that's so cool. Mm-hmm. You, you don't got to say it like that. <laughs> Didn't you win it though? Was it a, like a? I did. I did. I earned. It. <laughs> that's how I remember it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. We are. We are on. All right, everyone. Um, I feel like I want to start this off uh, with a temptation song right about <laughs> in my mind. I want to be free. I'll just stop right there at that want to be free part because that's exactly what's going on tonight. A lot of free uh, spirits. Uh, we got some creatives, some artists, some trendsetters, some influencers, um, some earthquake makers. Uh, maybe that's even, I only want to say that. I don't want to be insensitive. Uh, but tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome, um, first of all, um, our wonderful host and co-host, uh, Sister Tamika Catches. I am definitely the co-host. <laughs> I, I know my limitations, everybody. So I always enjoy being alongside the Green Eyed Bandit, aka Eric Saunders. So I appreciate this time. I appreciate. I haven't seen you. I missed you last month, and so it was. It's always great to see your face. Oh. That's what you call a virtual hug, um, Zoom hug. I'm actually going to call him that. So um, it's, good to see, it's good to see everybody. It's good to see everyone because uh, we've crossed paths um, before, and it's really been beautiful seeing the journey um, of everyone on here. Um, and so to see what you've just been able to do. And, guys, if you are watching this, uh, tap in. Um, we have some of the artists here from the 18, and that's it, the 18. We don't have all the 18, but we have uh, enough um, to talk about some of the things they've, they've been doing, their experiences, um, things that they've been exposed to, and really, you know, therapy, the art of it all, um, the reasons why we're here. So how, how's everybody feeling? Um, we're gonna, we're gonna have, we normally have everybody introduce themselves, so we'll go ahead and have you do that, and tell me how you're feeling today. So we'll just go around the clock here. Deanna, we'll start with you. Okay, hello, good evening. Um, as he said, my name is Deanna Craig. Um, I am the president of the 18 Art Collective and a visual artist uh, born and raised here in Indianapolis. Um, before I go on, I do wanna answer the question, how am I feeling? I feel amazing. Um, whenever I'm in the presence of creatives um, and go-getters, I just get a surge of energy um that kind of merges with mine and so i'm in a really good place thank you for asking and i'll pass that good energy on to everyone else on this um live this evening well, cool. um, but, uh, <laughs> back to uh, a little about me um i am an art instructor um, i love the children i love passing on art to the next generation um, i get to do that as a visiting artist at the children's museum um and i'm also the virtual resident um, artist at the Madam Walker Legacy Center. So I'm um, teaching children about art and creativity is at the core of what I do. Um, and uh, what else is there to know? Um, I love art and I love to connect with other people and hopefully that has shown um, in what's been going on this past year. Thank you, Dion. Oh, you're gonna pass the ball to next. Before yeah. I go on, if anyone is on Instagram and you want to learn more about me, that is my handle there, Deanna underscore heartbeat. Sorry about that. Right. Yeah, right over there. So <laughs> who, who are you going to pass it to? Uh, let's pass it to Becky. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me all right? Oh, yeah, we hear you. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Becky, or everyone knows me as Rebecca Robinson. Um, I'm a mixed media artist, um, proud member of the 18 Art Collective. Um, I act as the website coordinator, and I am also originally from Indianapolis. And the interesting thing about that, um, years ago, you know, when you wanted to find a platform for your art, the first thing you know, you would think was to, to leave the city of Indianapolis, you know, whether people went to New York or LA or Atlanta. Um, one thing I can say um, 
I ended up coming back to Indianapolis uh, maybe about 10 years ago and so much has changed. I'm so proud of this city. And the only way I believe that the art will continue to grow is um, to stay here and, and um, keep our feet planted here to um, keep encouraging other artists, not to jump ship, but to stay right here in the city and be a part of the culture. So um, I'm feeling good about it. I'm excited about what's coming up in 2022 and I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Go ahead and who are you going to pass it to? I'm going to pass it to Pope. <laughs> All right. Can you you're kind of going in and out, but we hear you. Um, my apologies. Sorry. Um, all right. Hey, yeah. Um, my name is Pope, Pope Gaskin. Um, I'm doing good. I'm, just, I'm happy to be here. I'm thankful to be talking to a Hall of Famer and here with a collective artist. And so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that, Pope. Appreciate that. Uh, so I guess that leaves you, hey, sir. My bad. I didn't mean to leave you out there. <laughs> you good. My name is King Rhodes. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at King Rhodes. Uh, website, kingroads.com. I am blessed. I am super inspired right now. My new series of work is, um, it, I'm so happy. One of my pieces brought me to tears the other day. Um, I'm really excited to share it with everyone, to share all my work. Very excited to be a part of the collective. I am born and raised here in Indy. I'm a local artist, uh, contemporary, conceptual, um, and I teach currently at the Indianapolis Art Center um, on Tuesdays. I teach at, teach at East Brook Elementary as a part of their art reach program, but I will be leaving um, next week to focus more on my artwork and my upcoming exhibitions. All right, all right. Tamika, how you feel about that? How you feel? Is your heart- I feel great. I feel great. I mean, you talk about art, you talk about finding something inside that just gives you that motivation and you know I, I can honestly say I mean of course you guys all know we have been around each other to some capacity but I'm feeling motivated and even doing research and getting ready for it tonight you know I have to put this out here I, I told the artist before we got started but definitely like this conversation my mom and I had this conversation last month uh, we had an event over at Tease Me and um, she was just talking about the 18 and talking about what you guys have done. And then we got to talk, and we'll talk about this later, but then we got to talking about some of the controversial things that were around the Black Lives Matter uh, mural that you guys did on the street. And she was the one that was like, we need to get the artist. I want to hear from the artist. So here we are. And if you don't get motivated by the work that they do individually, it's one thing when you do, I mean, shoot, we're on a team, right? One thing when you do think individually, but you think about the power that comes when you are able to bring the thing that your, your strengths that you have, and when you pull those together with 17 other individuals, I mean, it's just, it's just for me, it's just been a blessing. I'm just blessed to know you guys and, you know, just to continue to support y'all and everything that you do. Like, like for real. And Simply said, we, you know, you got people, yeah, got to leave Indianapolis, got to leave Indianapolis. I admire the, fa admire the fact that you just said to yourself, I'm going to shine right where I'm at. Mm -hmm. and everything's going to gravitate to me no matter where I'm at. And, and then, you know, again, putting it together as a collective, that's, you know, in a time of a lot of negativity, I thank you guys for uh, you know, breath of yeah, breath of positivity um of, of really show you know how love is truly fluid and love still exists and creates and the importance of it um so we, we're gonna we're gonna hop into it um but before we do i wanted to i'm not gonna share one of my poems but this poem is looking it's on my wall it was a gift it's from mari evans and i just recently did the ethers uh ethers night mari evans festival so uh Shout out uh, to the Indiana Humanities for that. But this poem goes, if there be sorrow, if there be sorrow, let it be for things undone, undreamed, unrealized, unreal. to these, 
love withheld restraint. Now, from that, I get many different meanings, but for me, it's just something something about you guys have just really kind of bodied that and and what you've done with your passion and what you've done with your time existing here on earth. Um, me and Deanna, we go back since high school, uh, back in our emotion days and uh, um, and football and sports and all that stuff and the divas, all that stuff, <laughs> different time. But, you know, then we was just learning. Actually, what did we watch? We watched Rosewood. Mm -hmm. up, you know, right? And a good memory. That was over 20 years ago. Hey man, listen, don't don't do don't do that. I'm, I'm sorry. Look, I mean or 10 or five. I'm looking at eight Just grade. Kidding. Don't do that. So, but <laughs> we watched Rosewood. We were uh we were heated, you know, um about that. And you know, we kind of went our ways. I went to IU, she went to DePaul, right? And um when I went there, man, I majored in African American studies. All right. And it was interesting because a lot of the stuff that we learned, you know, we had to learn 500 years in the past or beyond that. And then really understand a lot of this stuff that's coming new terminology. And, and it was just interesting to see, because now I see so many people coming into this information. And one of the things we studied was black parents. And you guys remind me of that because I never knew there were so many black artists in Paris. What kind of attention have you guys brought to Indianapolis with what you did as a bit? Is it getting worldwide? Is it international? What, 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 tell me, what's this experience been like? Um, can I first um, give the people a little background on who we are um, and who the 18 is so that the then when we answer that, they can um, maybe understand a little bit better. Of um, course. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to jump in and say, okay, but before we get there, let us, let us know, set, set the table for us. Okay, no problem. Um, that, so I guess just to give a little background on the 18, um, to kind of put it simply and then to expound, we are very layered. We are a very layered group. Um, we are 18 artists living in and around Indianapolis. And we decided to collaborate in order to highlight black creatives and then also to infuse art into our community. And so like we came together as strangers, many of us didn't know each other, um, but we met to install the Black Lives Matter mural. And just in experiencing all that was 2020, we realized that we connected in two main areas, which was art and community building. And so since then we've joined forces and we haven't looked back. And because of our passion and the authenticity behind you know, what it is that we want to share, there has been um, kind of like an, a highlight on not only the mural, but the things that have come after. And so that kind of setting the, the table for the attention that you are speaking of, Eric. So if you, if you can remind us of the question, we can go from there, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> since um, the question was, again, I was making reference to Black Paris, you know, because the world came to the, you know, what kind of attention um, have you received? You know, what is this experience? Anybody? Oh, <laughs> well, um, according to Gang Gang, uh, Molly Jeffers, she kept up with all the different articles that we were featured, featured. I think we had 93 million publications across the board uh, after the mural was done. Uh, the mural was featured in Forbes with, um, you know, a brief write-up about that. Um, I can't keep up. It's I would say it's probably at least been international, if not worldwide. Uh, the whole movement, the whole Black Lives Matter movement, there were multiple murals being made across the country but uh, i think ours uh had a very unique look to it a unique story um a lot of them were vandalized but it's kind of it's different to watch something on the news or to hear about something going on somewhere else when it actually happens in your city then it's like a so when the mural was vandalized and all that kind of stuff it's like oh man all of this stuff that we're seeing going on in washington dc and flint and all these protests and stuff now it's happening here 
and I have a chance to be a part of this movement and use what I've been doing my whole life, you know, to help move it forward or to at least assist in some. Um, so yeah, we've we've done really well um, due to the mural. And shout out to Gang Gang, thankful to them and all their efforts. I'm I'm gonna just do a little counter question there with this still being Indiana and in, in its roots. Was there any anticipation amongst anyone that something would uh, happen in terms of the mural being defaced? Was that even a, a before thought? Absolutely. I think we all talked about it amongst ourselves, like here and there during the creation. And I was honestly surprised it took three days. I think it was really a matter of them realizing that the mural was complete and they're like, oh, okay, now we can go down there and destroy it. But the few people that tried to intervene and then all of the comments on Facebook Live when Channel 8 News on there, all the hateful things and they're destroying this, they're vandalizing this, they're, you know, all this stuff. I, it, we were full aware that people weren't happy with what we were doing. So there was going to be some kind of backlash. So when it happened, it wasn't surprising to me at all. I don't know about anybody else like in the collective. Even more. So yeah, they they yeah. helped tell the story. It's like if you went out of your way to come down here and pour paint on essentially a piece of art the that says Black Lives Matter, you have a problem with that. And that's the reason why we did the mural in the first place. Yeah. So they just helped. <laughs> yeah. And just to piggyback on what King said, you know, after it was defaced, you know, we did um speak amongst each other, like, you know. Do we repaint it? Do we go back out there and fix it? And, and we really thought about that. And we said, you know, this is the reason why we did this. And that just was a symbol of hate and anger. And, you know, someone that had, um, they were just displeased. You know, we were there out there to do something positive. We were out there to do something as a unit. And for someone to come and do something like that, that was heartbreaking. But it was even stronger when we came together and said, you know what, we're going to leave it as is, and this just proves our point why we were out there in the first place. When when they go low, we go high. But before we go high, somebody going to have to catch my <laughs> No. And so the, and one of the things, um, this is interesting, and sorry to cut you off, Eric, but why do you guys feel like this was such a vital piece of art in this point, like at that moment? Well, I, I feel like one of, one of the reasons that I feel art is so important in the first place, especially in the cl racial climate that we're in, is because it, it creates openings for dialogue that should have been happening in the first place. And so, you know, from, from the perspective of the, of, a, of the collective as a whole, we realize that, you know, visual, the visual art that we create, as well as the art of dialogue, you know, the conversations that stem from the art that we're doing, they're both equally important. And the, the depth of knowledge and the passion that we have within this group has allowed our voice to even be, to be even more far reaching. So um, just art in general, I think it steps on toes, but it also makes people start, um, doing a little more self-reflecting as well. And then those conversations swell up and then it's just this big um, snowball effect. And for us as artists, um, I feel like it's kind of a responsibility of ours to reflect um, reflect the times that we're in. Nina Simone says that quote, you know, the, it is the responsibility of us um, as artists to do that. And so um, that's, ex that's exactly what we're doing. And, you know, when people hear art, sometimes you just think about painters um, but in this collective is comprised of all types of, of art. So I mean, like, you know, art instructors, musicians, public speakers, professors, mentors. So, you know, we're taking this mission, this art into all of those spaces. And so what started as 18 people painting the words Black Lives Matter on the street, a year later is a group of people doing the work to ensure that the message of Black Lives Matter is loud and clear. So it's just art continuing to give and give and give. I think another thing that's important, I mentioned earlier about it being your city. As far as I know, Indianapolis has never really done anything like that in order to get involved or engage with what's going on worldwide. There are Black people 
you know, all worldwide men been incarcerated, children, you know, people of all ages um, of, you know, black origin being killed or, you know, put in these situations. And Indianapolis has never been a city that the media or anyone can look to to be like, look what they're doing over here in order to, you know, push the, you know, the envelope. So that was cool to be a part of that and be, you know, in this group of artists to look back when I'm, you know, older and be like, tell my children, I was a part of this movement with artists and, you know, we, we did this because, you know, to tell them the story and we brought a lot of attention to Indianapolis. It definitely feels like a stamp in history. And like I said, it was just, it was very cool to watch that. And I um, commend you all on your uh, uh, courage um, to be out there, to be exposed. I, uh, but at the same time, I do applaud you on your about itness um, because you said we about to do this and we're going to do it in broad day. Like what's happening? <laughs> and um, and I mean, this the uh, again how you know that was all captured. And again, we're just really happy to have you guys here to, ha- to have this uh, conversation. Um, Tamika, you have any questions you want to throw at? Yeah, I, I mean, I just go back and I don't know why, like this popped in my mind. Um, but you think back, and you know, one of the things for me, I read about it, I was actually in the wobble and somehow like caught wind of it. Um, what was about to happen. And so then for me, it was like, you know, I know these artists and I want to support them and the work that they're doing and especially during this climate. But it's interesting because even from my end, I got emails from people upset that I supported you guys. And so I can only imagine if I'm getting emails, the emails and, you know, just responses and comments and all of that that you guys received, especially early on. What do you think was, well, I mean, there's probably a lot of different things that you can think of, but why do you feel like there was so much pushback early on? You know, I've never thought about that, actually. Um, I just think that our city is maybe full of more people that are against the color of our skin than we thought, because I don't see why there would be any other reason to hate a piece of public art so much especially something as cool as a piece of art that you can drive over we didn't we don't have that on every street there are cities in san francisco new york that have these huge massive public art pieces and here's this one right here just basically saying this group of marginalized individuals that everyone knows is you know under attack or under scrutiny that they matter. And then there was all this justification for, you know, all lives matter. People even created hashtags to combat what we were trying to do. And it, it just, I don't, I don't even know, honestly. I mean, if you account the elections, I think we, our state was red. So that's another thing too, you know, not trying to bring politics in, Yeah, it was but it's like, yeah it's like normally when a state is red there's a probably a little bit more problems in the racial area or, you know stuff of that nature so I'll throw it past the ball to somebody else if they want to you know jump in well I then that actually will allow me to maybe tell why I wanted to paint the mural um to and it's really to address some of the people that may have been uncomfortable with it Um, to begin with. For me personally, I wanted to go down there to paint this because I wanted my art and activism to serve um, as a voice for the lives that have been unjustly taken from this earth. So I don't know if people were, you know, uncomfortable with bringing that to the, uh, to the forefront. Um, You know, the, the lives that have been taken, Black lives especially, which were, which were and are being disproportionately murdered due to baseless fear and racism. If you're the, if you fall into that category, you may not want to be called out, you know. But I wanted to inspire my students to take a stand to actively work down work to tear down systemic racism. So, you know, after learning about the opportunity, I realized that this was a chance for us to create our own narratives in the face of narratives that always seek to erase them. And so, if we're stepping on toes, um, we may be exposing those people at the same time. Mm-hmm. 
Rebecca, you did you want to get on that? Yeah, um, you know, Deanna touched on, you know, her particular letter and her message and the letter that I had um, was L in black. And I really wanted to emphasize unity. And um, I titled mine New Nation because I was so overwhelmed, even with joy, just seeing so many people protest and come together. And that was extremely powerful. So I definitely wanted to capture that message and you know, have that something that would go down in history, you know, every city, every, you know, every state, even just around the world, everyone came together to um, protest about Black lives. And that's, that's extremely powerful. But I hope, you know, that doesn't stop, you know, um, we have to keep this um, dialogue going, and whether it's painting a mural or, you know, whatever the case may be, we still have to continue um, and, and saying that, I, I just, it just kind of makes me wonder then what is the proactive approach um, in, in shifting this culture? Um, and how does it, you know, um, and you know, myself personally, like I said, even, you know, being an artist, being a creative, like what more can I do? Because what I feel like that you guys have done is just, you know, restored a lot of hope and art, considering that it has been taken out of so many schools and that it's it's uh, school is just not it's not structured how it was, and um, and look, again with a couple of you guys working in schools um, and really helping kids understand that that your art can be your power, and um, and that and that's and that's power in that. Uh, it's, hope, it's, yeah. it's really up to all of us to I mean all all of us whether you're an artist or not to demand change within America's justice system. I mean, I feel like just as a citizen of the world, that's our, that should be our, our call, holding all police officers, you know, accountable, bringing light to the perpetration of hate crimes, um, every, everything. That's the least that we could do um, as, as a citizen. And I just feel like it's our obligation to bring light to those injustices. And so whether it be with, the, with children or for, with those that come to a panel or with the canvas on the wall, we have to contribute to our community and protect it and, and serve it and use our skills and our platforms like we're doing tonight to reach those um, that may not, you know, have this conversation and may be too uncomfortable um, just to continue the conversation and using art as that driving force. And I love when you say that, you know, one of the things that takes me to is, you know, we started this conversation June, 2020. Mm -hmm. And we started, I mean, this is episode 20. It's crazy to even think we've been going for that long. But the month of June, we went every single week. And I go back to the beginning, really thinking about when everything was like really, really heavy. And I didn't want to go down, you know, to be a part of the rallies. I didn't want to be in the midst of all that. Like I would, just, and COVID was going on, right? So like, not only is it that, but it's like people don't want to wear masks and there's a lot going on up here everywhere but at what point did you guys get comfortable individually and collectively and being able to take a stance because for me like I remember it was our it was the first conversation that we had and I got challenged and you know I got challenged and basically it was like you got to be present so whether you feel comfortable being on stage and having to be a spokesperson just your presence and being there and being amongst the people like it, it it just makes a difference and so for me it was like okay like I got to get over my own insecurities I got to get over you know the what ifs and all that and I need to be present and I went the first time and my little nephew went my sister went you know we went the group of our bible study you know which is a mixed group like white women black women you know Asian women, like our, our group is mixed but in that point at that at that point it was when I became comfortable, like, okay, like I have to make a stance. So for you guys using your art, at what point did you co get comfortable being able to use your art? And then of course, like thinking about the Black Lives Matter and knowing that to some people it's gonna be controversial. What, like, at what point did you get comfortable with that? For me, it was just the overwhelming amount of black men being killed. Cause I realized it could have, any one of those men could have been me. And I would want someone to speak out on my behalf if I was a victim of a hate crime and, you know, to try to get justice for me. Um, there was a few deaths in particular that stuck out to me, like um, 
uh, Armand, Armand Aubrey, um, Elijah McClain, like very innocent people just living their lives. They happen to be murdered just because people didn't like them. And at this point, I think we have to look deeper than skin color. Why, what is it that bothers you so much about Black people that are minding their own business and living and going about their lives the same way you do, do, do you know, daily tasks? Uh, there was even a man that was killed because he stopped a fight on the side of the road on the way to his job. Two women were fighting and he got out to help them. And the officer was called from some, you know, somebody passing by. And when they arrived, he was shot, I think, seven times in his back, even though he was being a good, a good citizen by breaking up a fight. And it's like, what situation can you find yourself in where you're not going to be seen as, you know, the enemy or the victim? And I also ask myself, too, what can we do? Because we've been at this for how many years? Just asking, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we we upgraded from I guess you could say slavery but it's still like where everything is pitted against us you know and now it's the cops and they're every time they justify or let some person off from you know a murder trial or murder case it just further tells us that we aren't safe and that they're basically giving them the right to do what they're doing are we are we um, the same definition for justice? Are we reading the same definition for freedom? Are we reading? Yeah. Are we reading the same definitions? Because uh, yeah, it's, it's at this point, there's so many things that are just common sense uh, amongst our consciousness, you know. And like you said, you know, with with racism is all exists. This is and we brought this up in many shows in the midst of COVID. Racism is so selfish. So petty that no, I have to be the main antagonizer. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? It's just like in the midst of something that again that's trying to take us all out as humans, you still gotta hate me. You see, you know, and you know, that's where I think you know this this line ultimately truly gets drawn um in this in this higher realm of I guess consciousness. Um and, and bringing a sense of realizing that there is no, like I said, I brought up the lack of integrity and in, in all these things that we value. So, Paul, I, bro, you got something you want to say? I just want to add, that's one of my uh, favorite things about art, it, it, is it gives us a way to express ourselves like non-violently in a way that we just it literally getting our point across. And um, that's something I just wanted to add that I like about art. I often wonder, like, what feeling arises from a person that, um, you know, has racism on their heart? Like, what is it that they feel when they look at someone that's minding their own business? You know, like maybe they see a back black family at the grocery store and it could be someone that's not of an older generation, because we know sometimes the older generation tends to be more you know, racism in the sense, and we're speaking on a certain group of people because they come from times where it's really bad. But some of the people, you know, that are maybe millennials, what is it that really gets them going? Like, what is it that makes them so angry or black? They have not done anything to them. And then we can go as simple as treat people how you want to be treated. So anybody that's not an ally, if you have a black friend, a black coworker, somebody that you care about, if you're not speaking up for these injustices, then you're just as much as the problem. Because if you were in this person's situation, if you're not a black person and you woke up tomorrow and looked in the mirror and you were black, I bet you wouldn't be as carefree as you were the day before. Because now you have to think about your drive to work, if you're stopped in traffic, all these tasks that you do on a normal day without you know carefree, because oh, I don't have to worry about that. Now you do because now you're <laughs> now you're the target. See now that's what I often think about. Paint everything you just said. I want you to go back watch this. <laughs> oh, I'm working on it. Trust me. <laughs> I think we had 30 minutes in. Uh, you need to go ahead and break down little segments of what you said because what you hinted to was the movie uh, Watermelon Man. Yes. Which, which yeah. Really hinted. <laughs> I'm not familiar. I gotta I gotta see that one. 
Yeah. And King, I'm glad that you said that because I, I'm, I am not under the illusion that the things that we do is just going to change racism overnight, obviously. But what if it just plants a seed into a few that need to hear it so that they so that they do ask themselves that question, you know, not, I don't, I, not, you know, trying to, to, to save them from hating the world, but just to ask, look in the mirror and ask themselves, why did I turn my nose up at them? Or why did I say that slur? Even if it's just internally. And then hopefully that question to themselves is going to um, lead to a kind act towards someone that they may not have been kind to before and just, you know, elevating towards that. So that's an excellent question, King, and something that I'm hoping that we, we're just planting those those seeds that are hope that will hopefully grow over time. And if it takes that time, hopefully it'll be, you know, authentic and it'll stick, it'll stick and then it'll pass on to their peers. And so I, I love that. Thought. I agree. I definitely agree with you, Deanna. And and one thing I like to say, hopefully, people saw what we did, and it encourages them to say, you know what, I too can speak up. I too have something to say. Look at them. You know, did we set the bar? Did we set an example to you know for other people to say, let how can I get involved? And I think that's really important because some people think protesting means just you know going down the street with the fist in the air. That's not necessarily true. You know, you can protest in all types of ways, you know, um, but learning that you can act as a unit and have the courage to, to speak up. It goes back to what you said earlier too, Deanna, about public art. Um, I think the more murals and the more protest art, like the series that the um, Indianapolis Arts Council is doing right now, Indy Keeps Creating, the mm -hmm. more public art we have, the more the conversation continues because children and people that are walking around in the city are seeing these big, beautiful art pieces. And it's, uh, it's raising questions like, hey, mom, you know, why is that black kid crying on that painting over there? And it starts those conversations. Oh, well, that's because of Black Lives Matter. And it, it'll keep it going. But erasing, they just got rid of the Black Lives Matter mural. Erasing and getting rid of those murals kind of stops the conversation from moving forward. And that's what makes our job, that's what continues, you know, for us to keep working and stuff. We can't stop. And, and I think, this thing, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Tamika. Oh, I was, oh. I was gonna say, listening to you speak about, giving you an example of a kid asking a question that reminds me of one of the things that we have accomplished uh, as far as the Children's Museum and transferring our, the mural that's on the street and having an actual exhibit inside of one of the world's largest museums for children, for, for children of all races to see every single day, these big letters that say Black Lives Matter and then to see faces of black people underneath it that are working artists. And then to have, you know, our, our stories and to hear us actually talking and then to have a, a glass encasement of all of the things that we used for the mural. These kids are getting to see that, they're getting to feel it. I get to hear the stories of the parents of, of the conversations that they have um, after leaving there or wanting to go back and see it again. And so it's working at, at, on some level um, and, and just and shout out to the Children's Museum to, to have us there to, to um, speak to the children um, and to impress upon them the importance of, of equality and, and that we're here and that we are artists that are black and, and we are <laughs> the same as you know, so I, I thought that was important to, to highlight that something that started in August of last year that we thought was going to be three days has turned into an exhibit that children get to experience. And that's, yeah. next, I mean, that's kind of jumping to the question a little bit of, you know, a lot of people didn't know that the mural wasn't going to live on and that it was, we thought it was going to stay, you know, Fort Wayne Avenue, like it's, it's planted, right? It's there. Now, moving forward I mean how did you guys feel when you found out that it was being removed or did you know that before you got into it um I personally didn't know that the mural was I didn't know how long it was going to be up and that's why I like Deanna was saying was so thankful for the Children's Museum for extending the message because there's like confederate leaders who had monuments up for decades and so I went, when hearing that the uh, our mural was going to be leaving, it kind of 
it did bother me. But knowing that the Children's Museum had helped continue, had helped continue the message and other things that we had done along with that, um, yeah, that's just one way that I felt. We found a way to keep the conversation going through. Uh, there's banners around the city. Uh, we have high res images of the mural. Who knows who will reach out in the future and say, hey, I want to partner. I want to do this. We have our merch and our T-shirts. And when people are seen wearing those, uh, it's apparent that the artwork was done, done on the street because we left elements of that in the artwork. So it's another conversation starter. Say, like, hey, I like your shirt. Oh, cool. This was actually a mural that was done here in Indianapolis, you know, maybe three years ago or whatever. It's a collective of Black art. So we've taken the proper steps in order to keep the conversation going in spite of them removing the mural. And now it's kind of like, what can we do to push the envelope next? We got to do something even bigger and also put in place steps to where this thing won't be removed. Like when this is being created or when this is signed, this is going to be a permanent piece. And I believe the 18 r Collective with Gang Gang, uh, Miss Catchings, all of the leaders here in Indy, Mariah Ivy, I believe with us, if we continue to work, at least Indianapolis can change for the better. And those shirts that he was speaking of, those um, Black Lives Matter shirts are actually still for sale on our website. If anybody <laughs> wants to, you know, Great I'm just plan. saying, if, 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 if anybody wants to support the message, they are, they're out there for, for consumption. So there is on our website, 18rcollective.com. I didn't mention that I am the merchandising coordinator for the 18 Art Collective. I work right, cool. very well, closely. Well, then you slipped a little bit. Well, I did. Back. Back. Yes, yes, that's why I said it. Well, <laughs> hey, President Beyonce, <laughs> I, I told her the other day. <laughs> that's that's woman. That's, that's, <laughs> yes, that's Wonder Woman with seasoning right there. <laughs> <laughs> Book bags, duffel bags. I mean, you can get it in. Black Lives Matter all day. <laughs> and I want to answer your question about you were asking us how we felt about the street getting torn up or or if we knew um, one thing that I was telling um, some some of the DPW and um, Indianapolis Cultural Trail workers was was that, you know, we, we didn't know that it was going to be temporary um, at, at all. And so we asked them to help um, save some of the mural. Uh, for us so that we could um, keep an artifact um, of it and to keep it at the forefront of our minds to help us visually in our panel talks and our public speaking. Um, but what I wanted them to understand is that, you know, we painted those words on asphalt, but Black Lives Matter doesn't live and die there. So we are the walking, breathing um, embodiment <laughs> of that to continue to continue that, that message and the work that it takes um, to keep that message alive. So um, it, it, it will be gone, but it's going to be so much bigger. So what is, I'm just getting a little technical. So the mural is not gonna be on the street. Is the, the street being constructed on? Is the ground being torn up? And when you say it's moving from the Children's Museum, is it, are you guys redoing the design or are you actually taking I don't know, like uh, the the top part of the asphalt. <laughs> so the as it's, it's already obliterated. We have we're we're going to pick up these big chunks of of asphalt that were a part of our mural, but separately from that, at the Children's Museum is an entire exhibit where it is a recreation of the mural from the street. So. Um, and, and also there is an, a glass encasing, so they're going to keep some of the actual mural that was on the street in there as an artifact as well. So it's just adding to the exhibit to retell the story. And it's going to be shown as it was originally designed. Is there going to be any uh, reference to the defacement or, you know, is that picture or is that going to be shown? I, and, you know, it's, I there. it's yeah. Part. Yeah. I think in the real, there's pictures of the paint, um, because there's 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 this documentary that plays at the exhibit and it it touches on the defacement. I mean, speaking of the defacement, I just really <laughs> speaking of that, I just thought more into that. Like it's the defacement is such an important part of the story of the mural that we did because there are several public arts 
but none have been like vandalized three days after with like so much intent. And it's like, this is a true example of a piece of art affecting someone so emotionally that they choose to do something mm. just, j- just out of anger. And it's a, it was a piece of art. It was paint on a street that said words and had images that they did not like and that they didn't agree with. So like, I'm going to go do something about it. And it's crazy because it's like, we're not fighting, we're not being violent, which are all these things that they try to use to rationalize killing us. And it's like, we can't even paint a picture. We can't even, you know, like, what can we do? And that's, as artists, it's like, that's the one thing that we have. We can use our art without being violent. But one thing I think about is, you know, of course, like, and this is on a different scale, but as an athlete, you're always going to have haters. You're always going to have people that come in. I think the defacement is part of the story. But what I what I caution you guys now, what I what I caution you of is shining too much light on it because those people don't deserve light. You know, Absolutely. like you you've done too much and there's too much energy and too much effort and you know like. It was beautiful. And I said Fort Wayne Avenue, I'm at Indiana Avenue. So let me correct that. But you'd never want to put so much emphasis or give too much light to people that don't deserve that light. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think this is probably a good time to mention, I'll actually hand it over to Deanna, but I'll just mention it. We have a program coming up next year, the Young Artists mm. uh, Program which is an extension of all of the 18th efforts going forward. We've done a lot of public art. We've done a lot of events. Now we can start actually putting programs in place, um, hopefully getting some community partners involved to really get the work done that we want to do outside of um, the artwork. So I'll hand it over. Yeah, (laughs) I'll hand that over to Deanna because she's done an amazing job with all of the you know, organization of it and making sure that the collective is on time. And yeah, I'll just give it over to her. (laughs) And I acknowledge Tamika's hand, both hands raised. Yes, yes, yes. Put that on the record. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So yes, thank you, King. He's speaking of the Young Artists Program, um, which is a free three-month program um, that starts in January. But the deadline for applications is this coming week. It's the fi- this coming week. It's the fifteenth of December. That's the last de- day to apply. Um, and we're asking you to go to our website to get the application and fill it out. And so, what what is it? It's basically, um, like I said, it's a free. Let me say that free three month program uh, for sixth through eighth graders. And we are working with them to explore what it means to be a working artist. Um, so we're going to take delve into um, artistic awareness, community awareness, cultural awareness, self-awareness, kind of that overall well-being of a person um, and, and, you know, self, self-image, self-love, communication skills, you know, even down to just, you know, eye contact and some of the things that you don't think about because you, you're just thinking about painting, but all of these things are a part of being a working artist. And so we want to instill that in children from the very beginning um, we have some um, outings that we'll be doing um, each month, whether it be, you know, to a museum or a gallery, um, a community service project. Um, and then at the end of the program, we'll, um, we'll end it with um, having the children either do a youth art show or a mural alongside the members of the 18. So it's a complete immersement into the life of a working artist. And we're hoping that once the three months is, is, is over, that the kids are able to see what it is like to be a full-time artist, um, if that is something that they're wanting to pursue. Um, because those are things that, well, I didn't have that um, as a child um, to, to, to see a working artist and to see I could do that as a living. So we're wanting to be um, a, a representative of black and brown people in the community to show that you, you can do this. So on our website, if you are a parent for of sixth through eighth graders, please sign them up um, so that we can meet um, the next generation of creatives. Where will this be? Where will we at? <laughs> Oh, so it's it's all over. Um, so that that's the beauty of it. So we're kind of going to uh, introduce them to the cultural art scene. So some of the things will be taking place virtually um, with panel talks or art classes, but then we're going to do field trips outside as well. So 
um, it can, you can find, you're going to find you're going to see us popping up all over the city. We're wanting to introduce the children and their families to all of the artistic opportunities around the city, and it's really it's for the children. But we're inviting the parents to come with them as well because this is going to be a family experience. We're wanting the children to talk about their feelings and talk about um, what it is that they're that they're learning with 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 their adults and to continue that conversation generationally. So um, it's going to be amazing and just some of the applications that we've seen already have made me tear up because these kids are ready like they're 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 ready they are motivated they're they're passionate they're great at what they do so i'm excited right. i am too I, I think that our program offers a lot because there's more depth it's not like you said just being a working artist but with the 18 R Collective being active members in the community trying to fight against racism, we can also show the kids outside of just making beautiful art or expressing yourself, this is a way to engage with your community. This is a way to help lives. And we've already done it. So it's kind of like a backup for us, for those parents that are kind of iffy. It's like, you can see what efforts, see what we're doing um, you know, in the community. Uh, I think Pope wanted to say something. Oh, uh, no, you're good. Keep going. My okay. Point. No, that's that's all I had to say. I think there's just a lot of depth to this program, and I'm really excited to um, be a part of it. Yeah, so, we got a question. Aside from age, are there any other eligibility requirements? I'm going to pull it, pull up the website. One second. I'll just I did, it. and I actually, I yeah, I did, posted it. <laughs> Boom. I'm on it. <laughs> We talked about the shop, posted it, boom. Talk Thank you so page. much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think I'm looking over here, but I, I just got the second screen so I can <laughs> appreciate <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, look, I, I, so got one, I mean, obviously, y'all know how I feel just about the community. And, you know, recently in April, we opened up our second location at Tarkenton Park. And one of the things that we're looking at doing in that area, and I'll be honest with you guys, it's been it's been a struggle. Like it's been highs and lows. Um, first week we were in, the windows got shot out. Uh, we've had break-ins, you know, like it's been one thing after the next, after the next. However, I say that with a smile on my face because I know that God has planted us here for a reason. And mm -hmm. one of the things that we're looking at trying to do as we look at next year is figuring out a way to, uh, to really impact and infuse that community, those communities. I mean, there's four neighborhoods that all come together at Tarkington Park. So as you guys start building out this program, I'd really be interested in how do we get more kids in that neighborhood engaged and really looking at Tease Me Tarkington being kind of a hub where we can come in and actually do, you know, some type of classes there, art class. Eric, you know, I'm not leaving you out, you know, spoken word class, like I really feel like, and this is kind of me talking, but I really feel like for a while, people haven't looked at art because art has been taken out of the school. Mm -hmm. People have really looked at it as like, kind of like, okay, this is like pushed to the side. And now, you know, spoken word, you're starting to see it come back and not starting to see it, but it's becoming more relevant. I feel like during this time, of course, the artwork and artists being able to finally get your dues is finally getting to a point where that's even becoming something that people are like people are looking for artists. And you, you know, uh, and I'm all in, you know, trying to trying to make sure that we recommend the right people and get get you guys jobs and stuff. But I think it's important for young people to understand you're not all going to be professional athletes. So like, choo, get that out. But there's other things and how do you find and how do you pull that art out of people? And so I think that as you guys are doing your program, I'd love to figure out a way to really tap into some of the kids in the Tarkington area um, that are not listening to this and are not, you know, online, they're more on social media or around the park. You know, we gotta we have to figure out a way to get those kids engaged and to start thinking like there's more to life than this. It's interesting. That is like we have to adapt backwards. You know, we're so consuming with organizing through our social media that we, you know, forget at one point in time that this was organic or maybe that church was the network or there was a community of that really kind of brought people together. But that, I think to make you break up a great point in terms of what's the actionable, the steps, like how is it going to get done? 
you know, how do we push that envelope? And so I think what you guys are doing um, with, your, with the youth and it's again, this seeing that what you're doing with the community, that's that's incredible. And guys, I just this is this question has been going on my head, but I'm just curious. Um, Enter like were there any artists? I know Black Lives uh, Black Lives Matter murals were done all over. Were you able to connect with any other artists in any any other cities uh, behind you know closed doors? Or? Um, I know I had went and got artists from that I had known growing up from the area. I'm from four six two one eight around thirty fourth Sherman area, and I had gathered artists, art friends that I had known growing up, and we had did a mural that's still up on twenty first and Emerson. This uh for a black empowerment mural that anyone can go see. And did that. Uh, I personally haven't met any other artists outside of Indianapolis that have done um any murals. It would be nice. Uh that would have been even something cool for someone to organize, even if it was something as close as you know, Chicago or something, where we can get together and talk about our individual experiences and you know how we got involved with the movement. And to bring up something that y'all were speaking on earlier, I urge anyone that doesn't understand the importance of art to think about how they feel when they see art. I mean, because it's everywhere. And if nothing else, there are systems in your body that are activated when you see something beautiful with your eyes. There are things that happen in your brain, little explosions and stuff like that. That's the one, that's one thing that art provides when looking at it. And if this world didn't have art, it'd be so, so bland. Just think of all the beautiful colors that come together and stuff like that. And like Tamika was saying earlier, there are little um, bridges that we don't realize sometimes art could inspire an athlete. There could be a certain movement or a certain painting or maybe uh, Serena Williams or something in a certain movement. It doesn't have to even be painting, there's photography. And there, she just really looks like she's going hard. She really looks like she's training. Now I'm pumped for my next tournament. There's so many ways that art can inspire you and people from all walks of life. So I just, I just urge people to just, just think about that. Even when you're going to your favorite restaurant, the, the logos and the, the, the different designs on the bags, all that makes the experience that much more enjoyable. And if those things were absent, it just wouldn't be, it's enjoyable. <laughs> art is very important, people. <laughs> and I feel like that our community tends to like go heavy in like the music lane and things like that because we see people make it like that. But because no one had the knowledge to know that there's a way you can do that with art and, and photography, as King was saying, and things like that. And I think that the, yeah, yeah, that's one thing I want to add about art. Yeah. So, Rebecca, were you about to say something? Uh, yeah, yeah no, um, I was just going to touch on um, us, you know, becoming an official collective, but I really wonder if other cities, do they, the people who did their mural, do they keep in touch? You know, did they mm. even think about, did it cross their mind? Like, hey, we're on to something. Maybe we should form a collective. So I wonder if we're the only ones. So let me say, I, I, I was a nerd about seven months ago. I'm telling on myself, I was a nerd. <laughs> And I, so I went through some of the pictures of other cities of the murals. And whenever I saw somebody that did the V, that's the letter I did, I would like write it in their comments like, hey, I did the V in Indianapolis, we should link. I did that like <laughs> three times, but it was cricket. Like, <laughs> didn't nobody say nothing back to me. So now that we have said this, I'm a, I'm a big believer of manifesting things. And now that we said it out loud, I'm gonna shoot my shot again. I'm gonna contact them again and see what happens. Cause I did. But now that we're talking about it, I'm gonna try. So if everybody who did whatever letter you did, what if you could connect with someone else in that city that did the same letter? Right. You that's what I was yeah. Yeah. I mean, like where deliberately, um, you know, we all just gather because you did the letter V or B or whatever from around the that would be yeah. well, I'm really I'm really, you know, I like the, the cities that actually reach out to artists because there were some cities that brought just together people that just painted big yellow letters, Black Lives Matter. But then there were certain cities like Indianapolis, fortunately for us, that was like, let's lose, use the creatives that we have here. Let's give them a platform. They're overlooked and their importance isn't, you know, recognizing the community. Let's give them the chance to make this public art piece. 
And like I said, I'm so happy and thankful for everybody's efforts. Tamika was involved in that, the Urban League, uh, Indy 10 Lines, but gang, gang, everyone. Um, it, it's it's flipped some of our careers like in a very good way. Like some of us are very busy and very thankful for all the opportunities that have kind of spiraled from here. And there was something that somebody said earlier that I wanted to, uh, oh, if you don't know about John Moody, I implore you to look him up. He is an artist, but also an athlete. And he shows, the, the, the guy is ripped, but it's the first time I've seen somebody do both that good. He's an incredible artist. And also the dude is a monster in the gym. I believe he runs track. Uh, I believe he's in New Orleans and he's been like on a few shows. You haven't looked up John Moody and you're a fan of um, sports and art. He's definitely an artist to check out. I just thought that was appropriate. (laughs) And while we're talking about artists, I also, for anybody that's just tuning in, one, two, three, four. There's, there's four of us here on this call, but as as the name says, there are 18 of us. And so I really want for people to learn about all of the artists in the collective. So if you go to our website, there is an actual, um, a, a portion of the website that gives a little bio and a blurb about each of us. And then it allows you to see our own personal pages. So I re- always want to highlight each of the artists that are in the collective because we are all so dynamic in what we're doing individually. And so then to join forces, um, with as a collective, it's just been a great ride. But 18 Art Collective is where you can see all all of us. Hey, Deanna, you you brought the whole. You don't realize this, but you brought the whole sorority fraternity thing into this when you was talking about, hey, you know the 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 clubs, E Club, S Club, V Club, all that. You know. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll explain it to you later. Okay. <laughs> I was about to hit you, but why don't you go ahead and hit us with a roll call? And or anybody hit us with a roll call, and we just go ahead and, and say the whole eighteen. So, got them. Oh wow! Oh, I, I feel like you want me to read like, it off the website. Yeah. Name the founders. Oh, I was <laughs> gonna say they put Diana in the hot seat. Who are the founders? <laughs> <laughs> I get, you, you want me to just do it off the website? <laughs> yes, Miss Tamika, please. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we got the team. All right, I put this in the Facebook. They have it in there that y'all can follow along on Facebook. Ashley Nora, Gary G, Deanna Craig, Amaya Mim, Jared Deutsch, Shamira Wilson, Israel Solomon, Harriet Watson, The King, King Rhodes, Nathaniel Ray Parker, Courtney Blaine McCurry, Sylvia S. Rivers, John Moore, Kevin West, Pope, Kenneth Horge, Rebecca Robinson, and Fit. Art by Fit. There you go, Eric. Why are you going to put her on the spot like that? That ain't even right, man. <laughs> hey, you're right. You got four right here. You focus on your four. Everybody else can go to the website. You got to leave something for people to do. I just want to say, have those names said, and also to acknowledge, man, and, and say another thank you because I know a lot of those names, you know, slid through. Um, when we were doing um, Tease Me at the Artist with the, with the Youth First Night. Friday. First, First Friday. Friday. And so, you know, the BI, again, I already have this impact. And that's why I said this this person. <laughs> and I'm like, this has really been awesome. So we're going to make a hard left. We're going to get into y'all lives a little bit um, as we get into this last 30 minutes of our time together. Guys, what have been the highs and lows for you? Um, as your role as an artist in today's space? Um, I would say I've had a lot more highs than lows. Um, I would say the only lows that I can really um, think about right now, especially in uh, regards to the mural, is I actually had a few people that were supposedly supposed to be friends, and they also agreed with those individuals. They didn't like what we were doing. I had friends like the day before that were like, what, why are y'all going out there and doing that? You know, like y'all going to be out there. Somebody might attack y'all. I think that's stupid. I don't think that's a good idea. And I'm like, you're black like me. Don't, wouldn't you want to do something? Yeah, but I ain't getting killed for nobody. You know, just all these very ignorant things. And I'm like, I've known you for so long. I didn't expect you to say something like this to me in regards to something that's so important. You know, you know, I've been doing art my whole life. You know, I've been black my whole life, just like you have. 
here we are being targeted um, by, you know, this system. And I have a chance to use, you know, what I've been doing to speak out. And there were people against it that I didn't think would be against it. And then there are those that don't understand still, um, even though we've exhibited places, even though we've shown, shown work, there's still people that don't understand that it's a business. And there are still people that are, I would say, not taking it for what it's worth. And they want you to do maybe something really cheap or they just don't want to, you know what I mean? They're just like, oh, you're an artist. You're kind of, it's almost like we're a tool or an accessory. I need this painted. I need this done in my business or whatever. Let me throw them, you know, they don't understand what it really takes. Hey, King, it's can a, you it for the people in the back? <laughs> <laughs> Let that be known. That yeah, that's a great, great, great point. So, um, uh, for one one of the highs, just to answer your question, one of the highs for me as an artist uh, during this time is the growth. Um, co I guess as a creative community that I have felt. Um, I used to, you know, watch it, watch art, and and watch a watch the creative community from afar. But to be in it and to be immersed in it. It's something different. It's like, you know, the late night paint sessions and just talking about things um, and relating to things, it's 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 unmatched. Um, it's necessary just to raise the vibration if nothing else and to be around like-minded people, it gives it's giving this sense of freedom um, that's 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 that is rejuvenating rejuvenating us to keep fighting. So um, I am grateful for the art community, not just the painters, but but the poets and you know and if all all of the creatives. Indianapolis is a gem, um, and it's it that that has been a definite high this year. Is just everyone coming out, coming together, being confident um, in what it is that they're they're doing. It's showing. And twenty twenty two. Twenty. What do you say now? <laughs> I just plugged that. If you did not get a chance to come to Butter, the inaugural Butter this year, I know Tamika made an appearance. I know a lot of the big, important players in our city were there. But if you haven't got, if you didn't get a chance to go, you got to go next year. It's going to be the Black cultural art event that I feel like brings people from, it already did this year, from mm -hmm. Chicago, everywhere. But I think it's going to become a thing where everybody's like, oh, Labor Day week is coming up. You're going to Indy, you're going to Naptown, you know, Butter's coming. You People know, flew it's in a, on their privates, uh, on their so private I, planes to come <laughs> already. So what I need is some, you know, just a little direction so I can get my artwork together. So, you know, I can start. I, I want to elevate my game, too. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Am I too old to register for the young artist? You might be able to pass for an eighth grader. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm glad that you even brought, you know, the butter up because I was able to stop in for a little bit. Um, like, and I, really, I mean, well, you know what? Let me take that back. Uh, since we give a shout out, shout out to Vanguard Collegiate uh, School. Um, uh, I live on the near west. <laughs> 2018, um, director of community engagement. But we were given an opportunity to come and take the kids over there to see the exhibit privately. And um, and that was just, you know, they took it. They didn't take that for granted just to be a part of that. And so I was able to see everything, no interruption, but coming back and seeing everybody partying and having a good time, that set a new standard. And um, I've, I've been to art shows before. Um, none put on like a, the, the FUBU of art shows <laughs> um, was, was definitely uh, was definitely better. Um, now, again, I, I know I want to kind of get around there just to kind of see some of your highs and lows um, as an artist doing this space. Uh, uh, Rebecca, did you want to chime in on that? Yeah, um, definitely the highs for me um, would be the, the relationships that I've built. And I've been an artist for a long time. And I would say it, it gets lonely working by yourself. And I didn't realize how lonely it was until I had um, a good unit of people to vibe with, be creative with, um, bounce ideas off of, because that is very taxing. You know, being an artist, being a creative, your mind is constantly going and it's, it's stressful. So, you know, just to segue into that, the lows for me is just learning how to manage my health, you know, just my physical health, my mental well-being. Um, 
I would say 2020 definitely took a toll on, on me personally. You know, I, I, I was working really hard. We all were. And I think you have to have a healthy balance. You definitely have to have that space to be creative, but also be mindful of having some quiet time, being able to step away from your work because it is our job. You know what I mean? And some people do treat it like it's a hobby. This is a career. And people need to be mindful and respectful of that. And I'll um, mention one more high. Oh, go ahead, Pope. No, nah, you good. Put, throw your high out there. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. You haven't spoken. Uh, um, to answer the question, uh, for me, every day is a high to be able to have the opportunity to do my passion in a way that give me something to express myself. So, like every single day is a high. I'm thankful for it. Um, the lows for me is starting to clear itself out. The only low for me is coming from where I'm coming from. I had no idea about structure. I had no idea that, you know, there was actually steps you could take to put things on path to be successful in the future and what you want to do. And so the lows only come when I'm like having hit that heart that hit a wall and I'm like, all right, now I got to do this to get this straight. But outside of that, I'm even thankful for those problems because it's all part of the passion and the dream to the, the, paint the art, do the art. So. All right, and then cool. Hey guys, what advice would you give somebody interested in pursuing a career as an artist? Talk to me. Talk to Gang Gang if you live in Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> Learn who Gang Gang is and make them aware of you. I'm gonna go and take my little teddy bear idea over there. <laughs> I would definitely give the same advice for like anything that anybody do. The only people that don't make it is the ones that stop, in my opinion. So just always keep doing what you're doing and what you. You know what I mean? What your passion is. Create every day also. Create every day um, to be in this um, career as a visual artist. This is also um, some advice that was given to me by some of my fellow 18 collectors. I've had a lot of talks with Rebecca. I've had some talks with Deanna, Gary G. Uh, a lot of the people that have been doing art for 10 plus years, maybe longer, and the one thing is consistently, continually, uh, continuing to create because inventory is important. Uh, for example, a uh, good segue, we have a lot of shows coming up at the beginning of the year. And if we had not been creating and preparing for that, we might be kind of out of luck. You got three different places that say, hey, I want to show your artwork here in my institution, in my business. You haven't been creating. You don't have anything to show. So you miss out on the opportunity. So that's what I would say. Create as much as you can um, and network. Go to all the art events, meet different artists. You never know who you're going to see. But whatever sector of art they work in, music or whatever, there's always a way to engage or collab. Or even if it's an institution that has nothing to do with art, they might hire you to do a live painting. And that's one thing I learned is all the different ways to take the career as an artist and find ways to support yourself. Yeah. It doesn't have to be just art related, but there are admirers of art who don't do art themselves and their collectives. So much opportunity. One last thing I'm going to, I would add is to definitely take it seriously. And I know that might sound crazy, but it looks, it looks fun. It looks glamorous. It looks real, you know, but it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot of work and there's, and it's a lot that goes into it. But so you have to, you, you have to love it. You have to like, you have to love, you have to love, love, love it. Um, and in all ways, I, I mean, I think about art and all things art like all the time, you know what I mean? So it is, it, you just, it has to flow through your, flow through your veins. I That's think. like a creative though. I mean, like you think about creatives, you think, I think about myself and being an athlete. Like I love practice. I love waking up. I thought about it all the time. I thought about what I wanted to do, what skills I needed to work on. I mean, it's the same thing. And, you know, Rebecca, I know you're like mixed media. So like, there's a lot of different elements that go into it. Um, you know, one advice I would, you know, and I know you didn't ask me, Eric, but one advice I would just say is, you know, just keep moving. Yeah. And it's easy to get stuck. And when you get stuck, you feel like, okay, like I just need to take a break, but it's almost like, you know, and I think Pope, you said this before, but, you just got to push through, you know, just keep moving. So I, I, I definitely would say talk to an artist, you know, never get too comfortable. 
You know what I mean? You should always be learning how to hone your craft, um, to build on what you've learned and be a better artist, you know? Um, and in addition to that, if this is truly a career, treat it as a business too. You're, you know, being creative is great, but you have to learn the business side of things too. And I see so many creative people get in a lot of trouble. Well, what are some things you got a budget for? Hmm? Oh, oh man, a, a lot more than I thought about getting it. Like we just had a panel talk actually at the Indianapolis Art Center. We titled it uh, After the Paint Dries. And I pitched that idea because that's what I'm learning now. Like Deanna said, outside of the painting, after all the fun stuff is over with and you're done painting, how do you get in touch with places? How do you get in touch with galleries to show your work? Um, there's fees with that sometimes. Um, you know, transportation sometimes. If you're going to work on a really big piece, like I'm trying to move bigger. I want to do a 10-foot painting. I'm probably going to have to get a U-Haul because your average car that you see on the road isn't going to move that. I also don't want it strapped to the top of my car, you know, where the weather can affect it. So there's things like that. Um, when you are in certain spaces and you sell your work, there may be a commission fee. I think the, the norm is 30%. So you're paying this gallery to show your work, to do all the promotion and stuff of that um, nature. The supplies, you can catch, you know, different sales, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, um, stuff of that nature. And then there's stuff outside of that if you want to get creative, like merch and all that stuff. And I'll, I'm pretty sure Deanna, Rick, somebody else can offer some more. There's there's quite a few expenses. And mm. that's why the art costs as much as you got to, you know, got to keep it going. Got you. That, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> now, I don't think people realize how much one of these canvases are this size when it's not on sale at Michael's. Like some of these canvases are like $100 or more just for that. That's before the paint and everything. That doesn't include the hours of work, the, 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 the varnish, everything. <laughs> everything that goes yeah. into one piece of art. I'm so glad I heard that word varnish tonight. Anybody else want to tap into <laughs> that aspect of it? Because this, that just, man, that's, that's a whole other episode. Right there. <laughs> I want to, I want to jump in, Eric. I mean, I know we got 14 minutes and I am very, y'all know I'm very time conscious, mm -hmm. um, but I do see art in the background. So I want to make sure that we can do like a quick round if you guys have some art. We totally skipped over that earlier. We just got into the conversation. What you guys? But I do want to give you a time. Yeah, I want to give you guys some time to shine. And if there's anything you're working on, you know, I see some artwork in the background. So let's flow through. We ain't got five minutes for, for each yeah, art piece, but you know, you got about a minute and a half ish to talk well, about I'll it. Start. <laughs> I'll start just really quick, um, just to kind of talk about. My, my art, um, some of the pieces behind me are on my website. Um, others are going to be added tonight, but the one that you see directly behind me um, is one that I'm adding tonight and it's entitled as, um, as no, this one is entitled Know the Ledge. And it is um, kind of telling the story of as above, so below. And so I'll have a description um, on my website, kind of what it is talking about, but it's basically touching on, you know, what's done on this earthly plane is also done in the spiritual plane. I mean, in the story um, behind that. And if you flip this painting upside down, it's another painting as, as well. So um, I'm, I'm really big on, you know, depicting things in the cosmos. Um, so that is one of them, but my website, DeannaCraigArt.com. I guess I'll go next. Uh, it's funny, me and Deanna have never really talked about this, but uh, a lot of her paintings uh, revolve around spirituality. And right now, I mean, I've been working on some spirituality, but my current series, like I said, I'm very inspired for, so happy to share with you all, is the struggle between the mundane and the spiritual, the things that people put interest in that really don't have any value outside of, you know, monetary thing. So right here behind me, both of these are works in progress. They're a part of my new series. This is Bearer of Fruit. And uh, this is just the importance of the woman to the world, period, not to just relationships. Uh, it's a, I, I've been working on it. I'm in love with it. It's one of my favorite paintings to date. Uh, the woman is the bearer of fruit. And wherever she goes, that's where the fruit grows. 
without her, there won't be a garden. And then behind me here is Woman of Paradise. This is also celebrating women. Women, if you got to come to Butter and you've seen Color King, there were people that messaged me. I'm so thankful. They said, it took me 20 minutes to look at Color King and pull out everything. If it took you 20 minutes for Color King, it's going to take you 45 to dissect this one. So I'm very excited. I want to put them on live tonight because I'm like, whoever you know, comes in, they can get a quick look at what I'm look, what I'm working on, but I have so much more. What you got? Who we got? We got Pope. We got who's next? We got. Uh, I go next. All right, I go next. So uh, peace. <laughs> I'm talking about. I don't know if it's gonna be a fair right there. Let's get that part right there. Uh, this one of the pieces that I, one of my personal favorite pieces is called Escape. It's a visual symbolization of how we can use like health and wellness, uh, meditation, prayer, just different aspects to escape what people call like, um, I'm not trying to get religious y'all, but my, y'all see my name. So I mean, it wouldn't be right if I didn't throw it out there. <laughs> but uh, people like to consider earth is like a, a hell and how to escape the hell. Hell is a mindset for the people that do believe that. And th this pain is just a representation of how to escape that. And so. Yeah, I should have done that, Pope. You brought yours all in so we can see the details. Ours is all the Indiana's is all in the back. Like, <laughs> oh, I just had it right here. I got a couple in there, so I decided to grab it. Thank yeah. you. What do you have? Oh, well, uh, oh, it's um, no, go ahead. I'm just I, you can go ahead, oh, Rebecca. I'm just oh, I unfortunately don't have any art behind me today. I have a different, you know, I'm like that Christmas wreath right there. Um, this reef right here, uh, dollar, dollar Tree. Oh, oh, I thought it was painted. Wow, okay. I, I did too this whole time. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> oh, and it comes off. Awesome. <laughs> but luckily, I do have a painting. Eric was, um, I did a live painting at Tease Me. Yeah. And um, Eric is the proud owner of one of my pieces, the black and white piece above him. Um, I love that. Thank you. That's one of my favorites. And I'm so glad he is a proud owner. But if you're interested in more of my work, you can go on my website. It's artistsforbeccarobinson.com. And I have poster prints, fine art prints. So if you need a creative gift for the holidays, please, you know, visit my site. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to help. And uh, this is my piece right here. I've been working on this. It is called uh, In and Out of Fragility. And, um, you know, just, I'm just, and <laughs> so, you know, because no, it's, about to, yeah. you get, okay. Somebody, uh, it's funny, I know you say that as a joke, but some of the best artists' careers right? were launched from a piece of art on a napkin. Man. You know, the crazy yeah, thing. And, you know, like, Walt Disney, I, yeah, Basquiat, I was ready. a lot of them started their career by showing somebody a piece of art on a napkin, and they were like, oh, you got something here. So mm -hmm. hey, right step, <laughs> right direction. Right. So uh, Becca, uh, so Veronica wrote, "I want the woman in paradise painting." So just so you know, the woman in paradise, whoever has that, that I want the woman in paradise painting. Who's exclamation that? point! Exclamation she point. she she will be able to be viewed for um in September. That's all I'll say. In September. She will okay. be part of an uh, upcoming September. What's today? Isn't it December? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? I'm saving. I'm saving her because she's such a special piece. Oh, nine I have months. so That's much. That's nine months. I had to count it yeah. on my finger just to just so you know. But hey, 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 yeah, nine months. <laughs> but um, they can also go to kingrose.com. There are other pieces of art, and there are several exhibitions that are going to be before September. And if you like her, I wouldn't, I know this one's special, it's special to me, but I wouldn't get fixated on this one. I would come to some of the early exhibitions and see some of the other works in my series. They might find something else they like. I'm get, I guarantee they will. I guarantee All right, well, it. Uh, Pope, do you have a, you have a website? Uh, yeah, I got a website. It's under my former artist name, Billy Hoodoo is what I was formerly going as, but I decided to use my regular name, my real name, Pope. But my website is under behoodoo.com. But outside of that, all my social medias and everything is Pope Gaskin. And that's where you can reach out 
and see uh, my art. I don't really offer commissions and things like that as I'd rather my art, it just, yeah. But yeah, you can reach out to me that way. Okay. Right, hanging out with the artists. Guys, this was an important conversation. Uh, why do you feel like these discussions are important to have? Uh, for one, it lets us know that the community is watching. I don't think, um, I don't know if y'all know how important and how thankful I am that, you know, y'all reach out to us. Community leaders who are very important that have, like Pope said, Hall of Fame, have made all these accomplishments and done so much for our community. You inviting us to be a part of this space, it lets us know that you think that we're important to the community and you're watching and you know the work and it, it's it's a good feeling. Collaboration. I'm, I'm just, and it's yeah. just something, you know, I'm just saying, oh, okay, you, you trying to go do this later. Oh, no, actually, I'm going to be able to tease me with Tamika catch it. So you can go Facebook Live and check that out. That's what I'll be doing yeah, at that yeah. time. They're like, oh, really? With Tamika? Wow. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, Eric Simon is going to be there too, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, You're the host. I'm the co-host. Yes. I, co I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mean it in any yeah. kind of way. It's just, you know. yeah. right. <laughs> He's like, what am I, chop liver? Right. <laughs> paint. Make sure you paint my eyes. Right. You know, paint her statue. So. <laughs> All right, um, guys. I know the time we got. We got five minutes um, tonight. But again, I just you know I know this is an important conversation. Were there any? Um, final thoughts that you guys would like to share in the last remarks from our conversation. Start with, let's start with Deanna because you're the president, the press. So, <laughs> um, you know. I just, one of the things that I love about art um, and that's always said is that art is a universal language. And so going into 2022, I am just looking forward to art bringing people together even more and being intentional in that. Me personally, um, the collective, and then just the the, the creative community um, uh, as a whole. Like this, we we formed this collective this year, and then we're and next year we're going to get our our work out there, our um, our workshops out there, and expand to the community. And we're just asking everybody to come along with us. Um, we're being intentional and wanting to bring people together, wanting to highlight the community um, and the people in it. And so um, our hearts are in the right place, and we're trying to find others who um, are on that trajectory so that we can do this all together. Yeah. I would say there's work being done behind the scenes by the 18. Um, we haven't slowed down whatsoever. If you haven't heard anything from us, it's because we're preparing for things to come next year. And that's only going to spring about other opportunities, but we're also advocating the the places that we're getting into and showing our works, we're trying to set the groundwork for other artists in the city to get in there because this needs to be a continuous thing. There needs to be a fluctuation of different artists rotating out of these spaces, especially Black artists. They need as much attention as any other um, artist of any other um, ethnicity. Um, we're also finding ways to engage artists with things that might might have otherwise not been thought about before. Like, how can we take art and implement it in this program? How can we get it, like Tamika said earlier, in this neighborhood targeting where it's not seen? And just like a lot of us that weren't known about until the mural, there are a lot of people out there that might have a lot of artistic talent and people just haven't seen their work yet. We're, we're doing the work to try to um, eliminate those barriers. Well, I love yeah. it. And you guys said you're going to be at SACS, right? You'll be at SACS uh, at the Central Library. You'll be a part of Meet the Artist. Uh, any other things that you guys will have coming up like in the next couple of months? You're on that mute. <laughs> If you subscribe to our website and actually subscribe, you will be a part of our newsletter. And so you'll get all of the updates um, as we update them um, or follow us on, on Instagram uh, because, you know, things pop up all the time and even just individually or just maybe three or four of us together um, will be doing things. And so we'll continuously add to our ever-growing calendar. Yay! We have reached that time and I'm definitely about to go to IG and Make sure I start following you guys. Um, and I suggest you guys, if you're viewing, if you've seen it, 
uh, today that you do the same thing. Uh, so we can all stay in contact and we can do this again. Um, I've had a pretty good time tonight. How about you guys? Absolutely. Sure. All right. And I, and I just want to say that being part of the 18 Collective, that day was one of the best days of my life. So wow. we're not just friends, you know, we've, we've become a family. So um, I love all you guys. Oh, Becky. Well, I'm not part of the 18, but I, I love you too. <laughs> well, I'll love you. you and I will never part. Look at child. Oh. So thank you guys so much for tuning in uh, for the 20th episode. Um, and that's really an accomplishment. And I'm glad um, that we were able to share this evening um, with the 18, um, with Tamika Catchings. Thank you so much for this opportunity and kicking with us on this first. I know, it, it, it's 8.30, Eric, and you know how I feel. So, hey, <laughs> everybody, don't forget, so, January 14th, we'll be back, intersectionality, let's talk about it. Uh, in life, we all have different identities that shape who we are and so and who we become, such as our race, gender, sexual orientation, abilities, and economic class. So we will be talking about the intersectionality. Let's talk about it. And then... In the first quarter, I am, like, I'm pushing. We're going to get gang gang on here. So we're going to have gang gang. We're going to talk to Melina. Yeah, we're talking to Melina. We're, we're going all in. So I'm looking forward to having that conversation. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. It's Merry officially Christmas. 830. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. My uh, birthday just passed, December 1st. Happy holidays. Happy <laughs> birthday. Yeah, my bad. My bad. I was here so Happy New Year. <laughs> happy all that. Just, happy, <laughs> just be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're out. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all. Have a good night. See ya. <laughs>